In this video, I'm showing you some of my favorite accessibility features on the iPhone. Accessibility settings house some of the most underrated features, and I really think you're gonna love what we have to show you in this video. Let's go ahead and jump in right now. First up at number one is called background sounds. So I'm one of those people who always needs to have some type of white noise playing in order to fall asleep. And luckily we have a feature for this built right into the iPhone. So scroll down and click on audio visual, then click on background sounds. From here, you can choose whatever sound you want. So if I click on sound, you can see we have six sounds that we can choose from. And if you haven't used this feature before, it is gonna have to download the audio onto your phone. It doesn't take up that much storage, however. So whenever I'm trying to fall asleep, I choose stream. And you may think it will be a little bit annoying to go into accessibility settings every time you wanna turn this on, but luckily there is a shortcut that you can enable. So back out into the main accessibility page and then scroll all the way down and click on accessibility shortcut. From here, make sure background sounds is selected. Now you can easily turn on your background sounds simply by triple clicking on the power button of your iPhone. Number two is a pretty small feature, but I hear a lot of people like to use this. So click on face ID and attention, and you'll see at the very bottom, we have haptic on successful authentication. What this is gonna do is whenever your iPhone authenticates with face ID, you're gonna feel a little vibration on your iPhone. So it doesn't really add anything except a small vibration when you unlock with face ID, but it just makes it a little more satisfying when you unlock your iPhone. Next up is a feature called back tap. This is probably the most popular feature hidden in accessibility settings. Click on touch and then scroll down and you'll see at the very bottom we have back tap. If you click on this, we can see we can choose either a double tap or a triple tap to perform certain actions. You can see we have a bunch of actions that we can choose from. And the ones that I have is a double tap for spotlight search and a triple tap for control center. This is really awesome if you want to quickly access a certain section of your iPhone without doing anything. So you can see here when I triple tap the back of my iPhone, I can open control center and it's a lot easier than reaching all the way to the top of the screen. Next up is called live captions. This is a really cool feature if you are someone who is hard of hearing or if you just wanna simply watch something out in public without turning your volume all the way up. So scroll down and click on live captions and you can turn it on at the top right here. You can see it is still in beta and this means it may not work perfectly, but in my testing it does work pretty well. When you turn this on, whenever you play something on your iPhone, it is going to use on-device intelligence to put captions on that media. You can see we can also turn it on for FaceTime calls as well. And I use this all the time whenever I'm out in public and I wanna watch some TikTok videos or Instagram videos, but I don't wanna turn my volume all the way up and annoy the people around me. My iPhone can put captions on every video I watch and it comes in very handy. Next up at number six is a pretty cool feature called personal voice. This feature does require iOS 17, so make sure your iPhone is updated to iOS 17 once it comes out. But once you have updated to iOS 17, you can train your voice and pretty much create a Siri voice that sounds like you. So the idea behind this feature is Apple understands that as some people get older, they may lose the ability to speak and they allow you to train your voice into your iPhone using a language model. And you can have words spoken out of your iPhone that sound just like your voice. So if you click on create a personal voice, it's going to take about 15 minutes as you do have to speak a bunch of various phrases into your iPhone. And once you have finished doing all of that, it takes about a day for all of that to process in the background. But once you have set up your personal voice, you can go into live speech, turn this on. And whenever you enter a phrase into your iPhone, it's going to speak it in your voice. So this is a very, very cool feature. Something I'd recommend doing, just like I showed you before for background sounds, is click on accessibility shortcut and turn on live speech. This way, whenever you triple click on the side button of your iPhone, it's going to invoke personal speech. And then you can type in whatever phrase you want and it's going to speak it in your voice. This is a test of live speech using my own voice. Like and subscribe. Next up at number seven is called shake to undo. So if you click on the touch menu, turn on shake to undo. 
What this is gonna do is it's going to enable your iPhone to detect when you shake it to invoke the undo shortcut. So I'll give you an example of what I use this for all the time. If I go into Safari and then I close a tab, if I simply shake my iPhone a few times, you can see it's gonna bring up a prompt that says undo close tab. If I click on undo, it's gonna reopen that tab. It also works in things like messages. So if you accidentally delete a bunch of text, all you have to do is shake your iPhone to undo it. This used to be the default way to undo anything on the iPhone. However, Apple recently replaced it with a three finger swipe, but some people still prefer shake to undo and it is now found in accessibility settings. Next up is something that can drastically improve the battery life on your iPhone. If you click on display and text size, scroll down and click on color filters. Turn on color filters and then choose grayscale. When you do this, you can now see that your iPhone is in black and white. So not only is this going to make your iPhone a lot less addicting, if you're someone who is always on their phone, a lot of people like to turn this on just to make their iPhone a lot less boring so they can put it down and actually enjoy their life. But you can also use this to improve the battery life as well, as the display on your iPhone doesn't need to use as much power to show all the bright colors on the screen. Next up at number nine is a feature that lets you have settings on a per application basis. So what does this mean? Well, you can set up applications to have certain settings that don't affect the rest of your iPhone. If you scroll all the way down and click on per app settings, you're able to choose any application to customize the settings inside just that application. So something I like doing is I like to make the text size a lot bigger inside of maps. This is because when I'm driving and my phone is mounted, it's a little bit further away than what I'm usually viewing my iPhone at and the text and directions can sometimes be a bit harder to read. So just for maps, I always have the text size a bit bigger and I also turn on bold text, but I don't want this to affect the rest of my iPhone. So this is a really great feature. I can have larger text and also a bunch of other settings just for one application. And finally, at number 10 is a feature called LED flash for alerts. If you scroll down, click on audio visual, and then at the bottom, you can see we have a feature called LED flash for alerts. This is very, very handy if you're that person that always has your iPhone face down. Whenever you get a notification, you can turn this on. That way your flashlight is going to blink at you whenever you get a notification. So that's gonna do it. If you made it this far in the video, please drop a like and also comment down below and tell us what your favorite feature was we covered in this video. Also, we are looking to expand the team at IDB. So if you are potentially interested in making tech videos just like this one, comment down below and let us know and also link your YouTube channel and we might be in touch with you. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Michael and I'll see you next time.